Hello and welcome to another episode of Atlanta Brick Co. TV. I am here with Ethan, Bronson, and Ty in their amazing Rooms of Built Lego sets. They're awesome. <laughs> the Kibler Collection, we, I like to call it. <laughs> so we are super excited to tour this. We're going to look at each room individually and then we'll talk about all the sets and awesome minifigures that are in there. So let's get started. We are here in front of Ethan's room, ready to check out his collection. We've seen Ethan and a few videos on Atlanta Brick Co. TV, mostly yeah, minifigure battles. Mostly minifigure battles. And a Star Wars Between the Studs earlier, too. One, that was pretty yeah. fun. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Let's get started on your collection here, All Ethan. Right. So this little shelving unit here, what do we it's have on this shelf, top yeah. shelf here? So I've got the Kenobi Brickheads, mm -hmm. um, the original Land Speeder from 1999. Very nice. And then I've got my original, like my first Star Wars like Lego set ever. So this, so this is your first Star Wars set? first set. Basically, that started it all. Yeah. Wow, got you down this this rabbit hole of, yep. of collecting and spending all your uh, fun money. Exactly. <laughs> yep. It all goes to this. That's, that's awesome. That's what started it. And uh, then I've got the, uh, the Empire Strikes Back dioramas and stuff down there. Excellent. And and going back to your original set, that's a really yeah. good first set. Yeah. Because it some is. people are like, I got this little car it's from little, the city set line yeah. or whatever, and it's just not as epic or exciting is that hyperspace ring. So very yeah. great one to look back on as your first. So. Yeah, that's, that's a special And one. looking at the theme, I think you already uh, kind of given yourself away. You are a Star Wars fan, right? You're a big I, I fan of the, like Star Wars. of the lightsabers and the force and all that. Yeah. So that's great. It's all right. But I think uh, you have a nice room here for displaying, but I think yeah. most of what you have is actually behind uh, the wall here yeah. next to your closet. You want to describe what's uh, going on yeah. here? So these are all my sealed sets. Um, I mean, they're mostly pretty big, pretty big ones, but mm -hmm. got the Creator Treehouse or maybe Lego Ideas. Got I think the, it was still Creator Expert at that time. So yeah, yeah Creator Treehouse, that's a good one. That's one that Joe really wants, Yeah, right? <laughs> we got the, the UCS Cantina, the oh, UCS yeah. Tumblr from the Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. Got the, the UCS Sandcrawler, which is cool. That's one that was catching my eye when we first walked in and did a little yeah. tour of it. That is, I think that's getting harder to find now, and it's just so, it's such a nice design, oh, yeah. such great figures. It's so. so hard to get sealed, yeah. but I'll be building it anyways. So. There you go. One day you'll be opening, right? Yeah. So. And, and most of these sets you are planning on keeping sealed for a while then? For now until I eventually get more space, but I will build all of them eventually. Yeah. So. The plan is to enjoy them as they were intended, right? Exactly. So that's great. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. A true Lego fan at heart. But I also see you have some big UCS ones down there, the Millennium I Falcon. Do, yeah, I've got a lot of big ones down there that take up so much space. Yeah, they, just, I have nowhere for them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I can understand if you were to build all those sets, you would need like probably double the space of oh, this room. At least, so at you're, least. you're saving them for when you have the facility, right? Absolutely. So yeah. That's great. And I, I like your choice of not only the the 90th anniversary castle down there, but also the the Galaxy Explorer, you got some Forest oh, yeah. hideouts. So do you like the classic Lego themes too? I really do, yeah. If they were easier to get, I'd probably have more of them. I really would love to have like a an old school pirate ship to kind of accompany like the trio, you know? Ah, uh, yes, yeah. But pirate ships are very expensive, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I we'll, can understand. We'll wait on that. Yeah, holding off on those for a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And then you got a Stranger Things one hiding in there. Are you a fan of the, yeah, the Stranger I, Things I as do, well? I do love Stranger Things, yeah. That's good. So do you generally collect themes that you enjoy or just kind of collect sets that you think really look good? Is it like... Um, mostly it's, I focus on UCS Star Wars, mm -hmm. um, but there are a couple that kind of slip in there that I really do enjoy. Yeah, they're just too cool not to miss, yeah, right? Yeah, like <laughs> the treehouse. I mean, like the parts in that are just so cool. With exactly. All the leaves. Fantastic. But yeah, so that's your yet to be built, but we do have yeah, quite a bit of built one. sets over we here. Do, yeah. Let's quickly look over here up in front of your TV here. Um, we've got some uh, Atlanta Brickco exclusives, shall we say, oh, right? Yeah. So. so that's the, uh, the Demogorgon like buildable kit or whatever. Mm hmm. And then my pride and joy. <laughs> yes. The tallest employee award. Yeah. Pretty sweet. So every holiday season, we'll uh, have a little party. And one of the things we do is give out these uh, little trophies, these Lego themed trophies. And they're usually kind of a pun yeah. or a joke. And so one of yours is a tallest employee, which is actually factual. It is true. Yeah. I do. I am taller than Grant by. <laughs> Maybe like half an inch. A centimeter, maybe. But yeah. I do have longer reach than him. So. Ah, you got the hands. Yeah. There you go. It does. Very does good. Count. I'm sure Grant will be very annoyed upon watching yeah. this. One. Sorry, Grant. <laughs> hey, facts are facts, Ethan. You got to let it out. That's true. All righty. And then well, not to brush over this, but I do have Jacob's collectible card. Oh signed my gosh. With a premium smiley face. <laughs> that's a that's yeah. the cleanest Jacob signature I've ever seen right? on a card. I'm just like, saying. So nice. You got some, looks like custom printed yeah, figures so there too. Yeah, those are actually made by Phoenix Customs. 
there were many figures that were either made by Lego or never made by Lego. Mm -hmm. Like the Batman that they did was just kind of atrocious. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So I had to go out and get a custom one because I thought that movie was really good. Yeah. I yeah. have a custom uh, Spider-Man and it was Amazing Friends Iceman because they never made that yeah. character. You know, so yeah. you got to get those special ones every now and then. Oh, yeah. And then we've also got a Darth Vader bust hanging out here. Is he uh, one of your favorite characters, perhaps? He's my favorite character. Yeah. That's cool. So you have him specially highlighted up here. Yeah. So. Darth Vader's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty cool. But it's not just Star Wars that you like. I can tell you have a, a, a have taste a, for Lord of the Rings over here. Lord of the Rings, yeah. I've got every Lord of the Rings set I've ever made. Wow. So, so it is pretty cool, yeah. That's um, one thing Joe likes to brag about is he has he all the Lord of the Rings love sets. To say that, yeah. But you also have all the Lord of the Rings sets. Now, I do. Too. That's awesome. Yeah. Is I, there... I have a couple of the Hobbit sets, not all of them, because mm -hmm. I feel like some of them were a little lackluster. But... Yeah. But I do have like Bag End, I have Riddles for the Ring, mm -hmm. and then I've got, you know, the Sealed Lonely Mountain, so. Excellent. The good ones. That's fantastic. And is there a like, particular favorite among the Lord of the Rings, either in set form or minifigure, that really stands out to you in that section? Um, obviously, Rivendell is really cool. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about built ones, probably Orthanc. Orthanc, yeah. It's I love Orthanc. It's super so cool. iconic. So. Yeah. And yeah. then as far as minifigs go, it'd probably be a tie between Mouth of Sauron and Aragorn from the Black Gate. Oh, so both from that set, right? Yeah, yeah. so that set was just killer on minifigures. That's fantastic, yeah. And I like the display solutions you've come up with here. It looks like a, it's a piece of furniture on the bottom, but it has these metal shelves and wood, the wood shelves and the metal yeah. braces. So it looks really nice and very It's kind of got sophisticated. the Lord of the Rings vibe as well. Yeah. yeah. And actually, the drawers actually house all my instructions for every Lego set I own. Oh, so. that's so multi purpose. So, yeah, some yeah, valuable storage, yeah. That's great, yeah. yeah. And so, it looks like you've got it pretty maxed out. You don't really have room yet for the, the last two big sealed. Oh, the, the, yeah. The Lonely Mountain sealed and the Lord of the Rings. Rivendell. Did you build Rivendell or is it still? I there? built my dad's Rivendell. I, mine's still sealed because I don't have a spot for it. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I even ran out of room for my little Rivendell. Oh, was, no. Quite so, unfortunate. But well, like we said, one day, right? One day, <laughs> yeah. we'll have all the space. Well, some world, most people so. will say that one day they'll have these sets, not just have space for them. So you're yeah. halfway there. So. And then here I've got um, a Lord of the Rings uh, Sting Sword Mock, which was designed by Joe's little brother. Nice. So yeah, he sells those. You can buy them through Joe's Lego page, which is pretty sweet. That's fantastic, yeah. yeah. He did a great job on those, those look really cool. I remember him go coming into the store and getting the great pieces from Bulk and yeah. building them on the spot, which is very cool to see. Yeah, so. he, I actually told him, you know, if you ever make a sting, I will buy it from you. <laughs> there you so, go. There it is. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And let's move on to this table here. It looks like we've got the last bit yeah. of Lord of the Rings that doesn't quite fit, right? right yep, the little <laughs> ribbon though. It's just kind of chilling there. Yeah, it's a little bit outshined by its newer, uh, oh, updated yeah. version, but yeah. So. Yeah, and then here I've got like some of my extra Lord of the Rings slash Middle Earth figures. I've Very got nice. like two of the Bilbos and a handful of other... I guess really rare ones now. They've really gone up in price since yeah. they brought the theme back. Galadriel, the elves and dwarves. Yeah, they're they're yeah. all getting very specialty nowadays. So. Absolutely. I do have every single dwarf from The Hobbit, which is pretty cool. That's cool. Some of them are on the sets, but most of them are on the stands. So, mm -hmm. so even if you don't have all the Hobbit sets, you have all the Hobbit characters. Yeah, so, so those are pretty sweet looking. Fantastic. I actually really like this guy because he's helmet is just so cool. Yeah, I think his last name is Ironfoot, but I don't yeah, know. Is it Dane? Dane? Yeah, there yeah, you go. Dane yeah. Ironfoot. Yeah. yeah. I don't know all the Hobbit characters. I'm actually still watching the Hobbit movies, so yeah. one day I'll get through that. <laughs> <laughs> but I also see right above it we have the massive imposing presence yes. of the Star Destroyer. Yeah, that's actually one of the newer ones I've gotten recently. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so cool. I never really like thought I would get it, but after seeing it built at the store a couple times, I was like, I can't yeah. pass this up. And it just nearly retired, so it's it's good to have Not in your collection, yeah. All, so yeah. <laughs> it has jumped a considerable margin recently, yeah. so it's good to and have it by here. By the end of this year, it'll probably double retail. Yeesh. Yeah, which is pretty bad. That's so. that's UCS sets for you, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you also have the office below that hanging I out do here. Have the office, yeah. That's Are, just such a fun set. Absolutely. Do you enjoy the show too? Then I, I guess. do. So, yeah. yeah, they're great. All the memes. Oh yeah. There's so many hidden Easter eggs in that set, and it was just it was a blast to build. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were building it, did you have any difficulty with the uh, abundance of stickers? That was definitely annoying, but like there were so many jokes in the stickers that it was like it made it worth it. So. Right. There's a sense of humor to the occasion when exactly. you're putting on the little froggy 101 sticker or whatever, right? right? So, yeah. Great. Yeah, it was fun. Very cool. But above all that, we we looked at some Lord of the Rings figures already, but we have yeah. a huge case. So this is the Star Wars display. That's um, awesome. 
I've spent way too much money on these, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. Hey, it's but, commitment, right? Yeah. It's loyalty. At least they look super cool. <laughs> yes, they do. So, Where did you get that glass case? It looks really nice. I actually found it on Amazon. If you just search like minifig display case, it'll come right up. Oh, um, nice. There are bigger and smaller sizes. Um, you I filled that one out pretty that nicely, one. yeah. Yeah, it, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And you've got a number of really iconic Star Wars characters in there. Do you have a favorite or two that you want to mention in this uh, case here? Um, obviously the gunk droid. The original <laughs> gunk droid is like one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I know Daniel was very annoyed when you <laughs> happened to trade in a set that... Uh, was would have included have him, it. but you <laughs> saved it, <laughs> you saved it uh, just because that's one of the special characters from that set, right? Him, yeah. yeah, I understand. I understand. Um, and another one of my favorites is actually probably Max Rebo. He's up here. And mm -hmm. then the original Jango Fett was also yes. another highlight. So. Max Rebo is one of those characters that, will we ever see him again? We don't know. And that's a yeah. really cool version of him, so that's yeah. awesome. And then the original Jango Fett, of course. Yeah, you can't miss him. Yeah. He's so cool. They need to make more of them, but you know, they, one day they'll make yeah, more. Yeah, all the Jango Fets are so expensive. Yes. So another, uh, some great things to have in your collection for sure. So. Yeah. Let's stop there. On the uh, left here, we have your final display case here, Ethan. What do we have on yep. the bottom shelf there? So on the bottom, we've got the Stranger Things Lego set, which is one of my favorites just because it doesn't even look like something Lego would do. It's mm -hmm. just like their techniques in that set are just phenomenal. Oh, yeah. That's the one I actually have at home too. And it's yeah. just the figures are great. I do have the, the Demogorgon keychain as well, which is pretty cool. I got Ooh. that uh, at Atlanta BrickCon, so nice. that was a nice one. Yeah, those, uh, I don't think they're going to be making that much more Stranger Things in the no. future, so that's good to have any Anything, items from that yeah. line, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Then what do we have to the left of that? Over that, or over there we got BD-1 from Jedi Fallen Order, which is one of like the coolest games I think they've ever done. Mm -hmm. And the new one's about to come out, so super yes. cool. And then back behind all of it, we've got the Bricker Builds Darksaber Ooh. with the Mandalorian pendant tied to the, the hilt, which is pretty cool. Nice. So yeah, that's one of my really... One of my favorite pieces. Yeah, I'm not normally like a giant fan of custom kits. Even like we have our own custom kits, but yeah. Bricker Builds does a great job. Shout out to them. He does, sure. and it was a breeze to build. He has it like all numbered, like a normal Lego set, and like the bags and stuff. So nice. It was so much fun. Shout out to Bricker Builds. That's fantastic. So yeah, and that was also quite Atlanta Brick Con as well. It was, yeah. And then right there, I've got my sealed Chrome Vader, which is one of my favorites. That's oh, nice. A really nice one. And extremely expensive, by the way. It's, yes. It's really bad. I um, know Jacob loves to talk about, oh, I've got a Chrome Vader. Yeah. <laughs> so that is I've a very one, cool one. Which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Especially sealed. It's, they're impossible to get sealed. Yes. I like the display solution you have there, too, with the, uh, like I said, the poly bags in a container that keeps it presented nicely. It's not, yeah. like, flopping around. You know, it's great. Yeah, I think that one, one that expensive is, you got to have it displayed right. Absolutely. But uh, speaking of expensive, we also have over to its left, we have this amazing yeah. uh, old Cloud City set, nicely encased in that plexiglass. You want to talk to me about that set? Oh yeah, so it's actually complete with all of the minifigures in like very good condition, about as good as you can find nowadays. Mm -hmm. I don't have it with the catwalk and the landing platform, just because it wouldn't fit in the case, but I wanted to have it displayed with the minifigures, just so it has that charm, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks really nice, easy to see everything, and it's yeah. kind of an awkwardly shaped set, so... It is very, yeah. A good container for it and a presentation for it, so... Yeah, that was always one of my favorites, even before it, like, exploded in popularity. It was in the uh, Star Wars Vis Visual Dictionary, and ah. I, I just always looked at it and I was like, dude, this is the coolest set ever. Yeah, I know that a lot of classic sets that I never got to see as a kid, I ended up seeing through books. So that's cool that you saw it before it got its uh, rise yeah. to be. You were a fan before the bandwagon people showed up. You right? know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I didn't get it before they all started hyping it up. So yep. I had to pay the ultimate price. There you go. Well, which is pretty bad. I I'm glad you did. It looks amazing. So. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And above that, I've got the, I guess, the kind of UCS Tanev. It's the newer version. Yeah, that it is. It does have some cool figures, though. Mm -hmm. so. There's an old UCS version, but it has no characters. This one yeah. is really a lot more personal with the, each individual character that's special and to the this show. The details are so much, so much better. Yeah, that's a good one. And it, also, yeah. it fits pretty nicely on the case, too. It does, <laughs> it's yeah. It's got like a perfect spot. Mm -hmm. I also, I'm a sucker for the engines. Mm -hmm. I think the engines look so cool. Yep. 
but and, yeah. And over there, you've also got, is that the A-Wing over there? It is the UCS A-Wing, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was another one of my favorites. I think the A-Wing ship is just really cool. Yeah, underrated for sure. Very underrated, yeah. I, I like it because it's the one Star Wars ship that did some kamikaze action in one yeah. of the <laughs> scenes. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And we got the minifigure with it and the plaque. It's just, and it's a very, like, well-displayed model, I think. Yeah. Very and cool. uh, I think like like the other display solutions they have, this big uh, you know metal and wood shelving unit really helps with these big ship style UCS sets because they can kind of hang out the edges a little bit. They can position them just right. Yeah, I think they uh, they really look excellent in this the way you displayed them. So, Thank you, I appreciate yeah. that. And I mean, when you collect something like UCS Star Wars, you might as well have a nice way to display them. Exactly. And speaking of UCS Star Wars, we have, I think the rest of the ones that we're looking at are UCS Star Wars, yes, right? Yes, they yeah. are. So I've got the gunship, which is another one of my favorites because Lego, for some reason, hates doing really cool prequel sets. <laughs> yeah, they do. So I'm still waiting on a Jedi Temple, but yeah, maybe the gunship one day. was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, minifigures were a little controversial, but... Yep. They, they, I think they could have put many more minifigures with it, but they yeah. wanted to keep it simple, I guess. So. Yeah, but the build itself is actually very well done, I, I would say. Yeah, So very uh, dynamic with its Absolutely, wings and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Then you got the land speeder over to its left. Yeah, which is also, I feel like, another underrated one. Because, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's another land speeder, but, like, the angles and the curves on it are just, they're perfect. Yeah, that windscreen is such a cool mold of a piece. So I agree, yeah. It's really well implemented. So. And the, the C-3PO is just super cool. It's got the dual molded leg. I actually have two of those. I got one on the stand, and I have one in the display case. Oh, nice, because you just like that figure yeah, so much, right? Yeah, it's just so. so cool. That's great. And then on the next shelf up, you have two of the most iconic Star Wars Probably my UCS. two favorite Star Wars sets I have built right now is mm -hmm. the, uh, the Imperial Shuttle, with all the minifigures and the stand and everything. Yes, it's magnificent. A very nice set. Mm -hmm. And then next to it, you know, I've got the some of my creatures from the Star Wars minifigure collection, and then I've got the Slave One, which is wowzers. <laughs> yeah. Which is another very very nice set. That is awesome. Yeah, those are two sets that people are always asking about, and we occasionally have, but when we do, they're very usually rarely, but yeah. super expensive, super cool. Yeah. Now, when uh, when did you acquire those two particular sets? Did you get them new sealed? Did you get them built? How I, did you get them? I did buy the... I got the Slave One sealed as a gift, which was a very awesome gift. Fantastic. Yeah, yes. and then I actually bought the uh, Imperial Shuttle. That was the built one we had at the store, so I nice. bought that one, which was... Probably way more affordable than getting a new sealed one at this point, right? So. Oh, yeah. yeah. The sealed prices are really bad on that. <laughs> yes. But it's such a cool set. Like, it's honestly probably one of the best ones I've done. Yes. There's hardly any studs. So. Yeah, it's super clean. And, uh, you know, not all the Star Wars sets from that era were perfect, but this one is like, you know, what can you yeah. say bad about it? Maybe Very the stand's nice. a little bit big and black, but I mean, how are you going to get it up there? So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. so cool. So cool. Fantastic. Well, that's about all you've got in your room here, Ethan. But thank you so much for your time and uh, showing off your amazing collection and all the things that you've accumulated over the years. Yeah. And uh, let's uh, have a look at some of the other rooms here. Yeah. All right, we are here in Ty's room checking out his awesome collection. One thing that really strikes me as I walk in was this cool beach mock. What do we have here? Yeah, so this has been a work in progress for a little while. Um, spent quite a lot of time on it. I had a, an original design, but I tore it off and redid it all. So, so this is in, uh, you know, kind of flux as you're working on different iterations, right? Yeah, so, so I plan on making actually Lego City eventually, but I wanted to start on the beach because I thought that would be... Yeah. Cool, you know. Beaches yeah. are excellent starting points for cities. If, yeah. if you notice throughout history, there's a lot of beachfront property going on. So. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks really nice. I can see that you spent a lot of time in it because all those tiles, putting those down yeah. and even working on those is going to be a lot of work. So. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But you also have a bunch of cool sorted parts here on the walls here. So is that what you're using some of those pieces to build with? A little bit, yeah. I've also gotten a lot of those parts from the store. Nice. Um, yeah. Maybe the, some of the official Lego stores. Mm -hmm. I see pick a brick cups yes. up there. Yeah. Yep. So, that's great. And then uh, to the left of your build area, I see a very cool Han Solo ship. Yeah, so I actually recently just got that. Just and, got uh, that? Wow, that's mm -hmm. awesome. I really liked the movie, so I thought it'd be awesome to get that. Yeah, so. that's one movie I think uh, kind of got dunked on a little bit when it first came out. Yeah. And uh, the Lego sets were particularly great for it. So, I mean, if, if you're collecting Lego sets, that's not a movie to skip, yeah, right? So yeah, that's def great. definitely the TIE fighter that Ethan has also. Yeah. Definitely one I want to add. Probably one of the best TIE fighters that they've ever made. So. Oh, yeah. And then above that, uh, speaking of Star Wars, we have all the Star Wars busts up here. All, at least a lot of the newer ones. Yes. So. Yep. Very cool. 
Uh, I already have a Boa Fett built, but I thought I would get that because it's already retired mm -hmm. out of stock. So I thought that would maybe go up eventually. But. Gotcha. So you have an extra Boba Fett just in case. Yes. Yeah. Yep. For a rainy day, right? Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. And then uh, over to the right, we have one of the most magnificent sets, especially sealed, I've ever seen. That's the Ewok Village. Yeah. Is that safe to say that's one of your favorite sets? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> definitely probably one of my favorite sets. That Got is that awesome. around Christmas time, so that was definitely a... A fantastic moment, yeah. addition to your collection, oh, right? Yeah, that's sure. great. That's awesome. That is so many cool figures. And that one's not built yet, I'm guessing, just because you don't have space or you're planning on saving don't it. don't really have space. I'm definitely going to build it. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Do you plan on building most of these sets at some point, kind of like Ethan? So. Yes, eventually. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are investments, but mainly. Yeah. Mainly going to build all. The future plans yes. for your own grand Lego room one day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I also like the Tom Brady jerseys in the corner. I know haters gonna hate, but I mean he's he's the goat for a reason, right? Yep. <laughs> and we got another Blue Milk Luke poly bag. That's a really cool figure, and it's, I love the display you've got there. Yes, so. yep. That's awesome. Yeah, Dad found those and definitely love those. So. Yeah, so I, I think that I'm gonna have to change the way I display some of my poly bag or minifigure things with that cool little stands yeah. like that. That's great. So. And you got a couple bigger sort of city style sets up here. You got the assembly square and the home alone set. Uh, when did you uh, acquire those? And like, uh, are those some of your favorite themes? Just city buildings in general? Um, so. I mean, I love modulars for sure. Those mm -hmm. have definitely been a big part of collecting. I really like the home alone house. I got that around two years ago. Nice. And I got mm -hmm. the assembly square from the store actually. Oh, about nice. A, about a couple months ago, so. Gotcha. So, so fairly recently with the assembly square, but the home alone has been waiting for a good chance yeah. to be built someday, yep. right? So it's that's gonna good. build it around Christmas time, but. Not enough room. So. Yeah, space, you got. You really got to think about it before you start building. Otherwise, it could be a real problem. Yeah, so. for sure. <laughs> That's good. And I see a few Lord of the Rings sets that are actually tucked away by your dresser here. Got to look at the right here. These Lord of the Rings sets kind of uh, hiding here. What do we got here? It looks so like a couple good have, ones. So uh, we uh, the, the gate. That one's sealed. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard to get a perfect box, but I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, if but you're planning on building it, the box isn't too much of a worry, right? So. Weathertop and uh, Orc Forge. Mm -hmm. Definitely really like those. Definitely Fantastic. gonna build them soon, but yes, no room again. So yeah, I love those Lord of the Rings sets. I think that's some of your brother's favorite minifigures in there. Is that gate? Yes, there's some really iconic characters there. And then I also like you have that uh, Forceman's hideout just kind of waiting with some of the yeah. other Gifford Fortress. I actually got two of those, so oh, I'm gonna nice. build one, keep on seal just in case. But yeah, absolutely. Got a couple of the promos, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are you know maybe parts later down the road yeah. if your city ends up expanding. Yeah, so yeah, that's definitely. great. So scythe too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, looks like a couple cool. Um, Ghostbusters Ecto-1, and I also see what looks like a brick from Mini Superheroes Today, is that right? So. That's right, yep. He actually was at the store, so I got one of those. Um, That's super cool. Yeah. yeah, Jonathan is a really nice guy. He has an amazing channel with lots of great videos. So. Yes, yep. Shout out to Jonathan and Mini Superheroes Today. So, but Yeah, and then you have another Lord of the Rings iconic piece right there, the pirate ship. I like how you've got yours displayed with the sails facing us. Yes, So yep. you can see it. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And those ghost figures, excellent. Very, yeah, very good colors. Expensive now, actually. Yes, that's one of the ones that has picked up with uh, the introduction of Rivendell. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and then we got the Million Falcon on display right there. That's a very nice stand. Did you uh, get it with the set like that, or did you so, have to get the stand? I had to get the stand, mm -hmm. but I got the Falcon and I put it on the stand, and I love the way it is. Oh yeah. And um, here we have Bulio. He uh, has a shifted eye. Got that one sealed. I thought that was really cool. It's my first misprint minifigure ever. So. Yes, those misprints can be pretty cool. Like uh, I see a few of them on Star Wars figures, and I think that makes them more collectible than just like yeah. a city figure, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I like misprint minifigures. Definitely want to try to get some more because they're definitely cool. That's cool. Yeah, I haven't met anybody who's really actually started to look for them now. I think that ha having found this accidentally, you're actually more interested in them now, possibly. So. Yeah. That's cool, and we got a very nice Razor Crest. And I really like the way you stacked the uh, Jabba's Palace on top of the Rancor pit and got it all displayed like that. That looks yeah, really good. I got that one recently. Definitely really like that. It was my favorite Jabba's Palace. So. Oh, yeah. The new one's very nice, but the old one has some charm and amazing characters. Yeah. So. Hopefully the supposedly diorama comes out. Hopefully mm -hmm. it works out. But I've been seeing a lot of rumors about Jabba's sail barge. Fingers crossed, yes. right? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then you got a nice minifigure display here too. I feel like I've seen that case before. Do we have those in Atlanta Brick? Yes, we do actually. I got that one and uh, definitely love it. So, mm -hmm. what are some of your favorite characters that you have on display in there? Um, a lot of Clone Wars figs in the back that I really mm -hmm. like. I see Pong Krell, Ahsoka. Yes. I see uh, well, Kit Fisto, a couple Custom good ones there. Custom made Boba Fett too. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love a good collection of, of fun minifigures, and that's a good one there. So. Yeah. 
And I see a modular here on the bottom. This is the corner garage, right? Yep, it's a corner garage. Got that one at the store, actually. So. Mm -hmm. Was that one that you built yourself, or did you get it uh, built? Got it built. Got oh, it built. okay. Yep. Saving a little money and uh, saving a little time if yes. you don't m mind skipping the build process, yeah. right? <laughs> That's great. And we also have a uh, small bundle of sets. Well, I say small. There's some of those are huge. Uh, you got a, a bunch of cool sets over here. More Lord of the Rings. And uh, which of those? I think we have some uh, brickheads on the top. Is that what those are? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And we got a couple of Hobbit and a big, I want to say Riven Dance, but I'm going to call it Rivendell because I'm trying to be nice. But yes, <laughs> that's the, that one there. And that's just waiting for a nice shelf or table to go on one day, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely try to build that soon. Mm -hmm. Sealed Mystery Machine there, too. Got that one recently. That's pretty special. That's, uh, that's a pretty fun. Uh, I enjoyed Scooby Doo a lot as a kid, and I, I, I really slept on the Scooby Doo sets, so maybe they'll make some new ones someday. Yeah. Otherwise, you can be like Ty here and, and collect them. Uh, with great difficulties. <laughs> yeah, the mini things have gone up a lot. They they're have. Expensive. Yeah, they're they're uh, they need to make more Scooby Doo someday. But. Yeah. And then that beautiful Disney castle thing down there too. That has also gone up quite a bit since yes. it retired recently. Yeah. So. I've heard that they're kind of hard to find now. So. Yep. Some very wise decisions by you, Ty, to yeah. start collecting these when you can. So. Very cool. And then uh, moving on to the left, we have a beautiful shelving unit with some very nice sets on display. The one that really catches my eye, like your brother and father, is the Black Orthanc up there. Yeah. Is that one of your favorite sets? Definitely probably my third favorite set, yeah. Third favorite set. That's pretty high on the list. That's yeah. good. So. Love that one. Mm -hmm. And I, I see that you have some nice display cases for the minifigures for that set. So you're yeah. trying to just kind of enhance their presentation a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So. I have some uh, stands for the minifigures because some of the orcs' heels will crack. That's correct, yes. So, so you got to watch out for some of those older yeah. browns and dark reds, which the orcs have both those colors yeah. in their minifig parts. So it's like you got to really be keep careful. Those in good condition because some of those are pretty expensive. So. Yeah, that's a great idea to keep the hips just slightly separated and the legs carefully yeah. placed where they're not going to crack. So, very cool. Preserving your collection for the future. I like it, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> you also got a nice Helm's Deep there. Do you think that they'll make, eventually make a new Helm's Deep set, or you, or you think that's the only time we'll see it in LEGO? So. I'm hoping they'll make sets they didn't make, and mm -hmm. then start on remaking sets. I like the, that priority, that's good. <laughs> I think the Helm's Deep looks great right now for... It's a good minifig scale yeah. battle scene, right? It looks so. amazing for its year. So. Absolutely. Those uh, sets hold up very well, especially War Thing. Yeah. yeah. This is great. And speaking of holding up very well, that dragon always catches my eye. The big dark red wings, the rubbery pieces, so cool. It's one of the first Hobbit sets I built, so. Very nice. Some great Hobbit and Lord of the Rings sets. A lot of the different figures ready to battle or have a feast, depending on where they're located. <laughs> so. I like that Goblin King up on his throne. That's yes. a nice way to display that. Would so. be really cool if they made it another one, but still yep. looks great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those big figs are pretty special. I mean, Lord of the Rings had uh, two different ones. You had the Troll and the Goblin Kings. Yeah, so that's pretty good. they look great. Radagast in a special case, too. That's a very collectible figure. And then below that, you have a nice little lineup of built modulars besides that uh, uh, corner garage we saw earlier. So we got uh, the bookstore, got the police station. Is that the diner and the Sanctum? Is that right? Yep, so. yep, that's right. Of those four down there, which one was your favorite to build? Um, hmm. The Sanctum's definitely really fun. I actually got the diner built, okay. and then I got the police station built at the store. Nice. So I you're built Birch Books, though. So Gotcha. So you saved a little bit of money and time yes. by getting some built ones. I mean, if you're going to display them, that actually does make sense if you yeah. don't mind uh, you know, saving some time there. So that's great. But the Sanctum looks really cool. I think those uh, sand green roofs are growing on me. Yeah. Uh, initially, I'm like, it's not black like the other one. But no, actually, I think it looks pretty good. So. Yeah, definitely great. Great uh, modular. Absolutely. And it fits perfectly it with does, the other modulars, yeah. too, so that's great. And then uh, speaking of modulars, you actually have a number of them up here, as well as that awesome treehouse uh, ideas set. Uh, these are all just kind of really perfectly displayed up on this shelf up here. Did you build that shelf for this room, or no, was it, it was here? it actually already there. So wow. Yeah, it was... Meant to be. It's fate, yeah, right? It was, yeah. <laughs> that's great. And you have a couple really nice modulars up there. I like that uh, Grand Emporium. You got the brick bank. In yes. the Palace Cinema, and those are all sealed. Um, they're used. Okay. But, um, so. they have uh, it's like sealed bags. Gotcha. So they're they're ready to be built, but they're in, like you know all complete, ready to go. Yes. So that's yep. awesome. 
Yeah, and then I also see an awesome Slave One in the box over there too. Yeah, that's like, sealed. Yep. Star Wars UCS. Is that the, the besides the Ewok Village, is that like the e Star Wars UCS set that you have or do you it's plan on collecting more? It's the only UCS set I have so far, but I'd definitely like to get the Imperial Shawl that, that Ethan has. Mm -hmm. That's a very cool one. That's the one that's on your list for sure, Probably, right? Probably, yeah. There you go. That's awesome. Got a baby Yoda just waiting in the box there too. I yeah. haven't built mine either, so I know, <laughs> I know where you're at with that. I don't have space. So. The Bridge Battle was one of my favorite sets when I was a lot younger. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's some nostalgia associated oh, yes. with that purchase, right? Yeah, so you got great. one from that store. Mm -hmm. And then the Quinjet, just a great choice. I mean, it's a fantastic great figures. Great figures, yeah. yeah. So. And then uh, the A-Frame Cabin. Uh, I haven't even seen that set before coming to you guys' house today. So that's really cool to see that one there. And uh, the trees look amazing once yes. they're built. So. trees look great. Mm -hmm. ATTE Walker, that's the one I need to get. And so you've got one here. Do you plan on uh, building it anytime to get I, access to the Cody figure? Or I really want to build it, but like <laughs> space also is a thing, right? Space, but like it's gonna be expensive one day. Not yeah. Not oh, sure. okay. So yeah. So keep keeping it sealed. Towards, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it, it, right now it's uh, you know commonly available still, yeah. but it's only a matter of time before it starts to become somewhat rare. So, yeah, like many of the sets we're looking at here in this room. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of rare, we got the Mines of Moria with that other big, uh, big fig from Lord of the Rings there. Yes. That's pretty sweet. Is that one uh, just in box or is it sealed too? It's sealed. Yep. Nice. It's sealed. That's a beautiful set. So you got some, like the Ewok Village, the Mines of Moria, a couple of these are really special to see still in box. That's awesome. And that's about it for your room here, Ty. Thank you so much for giving us a tour, showing off all your awesome sets. We sure appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for coming by. Yeah. There you go. Alrighty, we are here in Bronson's wing of the house where he keeps his portion of the Lego collection. So we're starting here. We've got yeah. uh, the introduction here, Darth Vader. Yeah. Is, is this one that you got at the store, if I remember correctly? I did, yeah. It was something we had our eye on for quite a while and uh, kept passing on it and then finally couldn't resist anymore. So I thought it'd be a nice entrance to the Lego room. It so. really does. It sets the mood. It's like yeah. you're, you're coming into the zone, right? Yeah, so that's yeah, awesome. Exactly. And then as you walk into the room, we've got a ton of sets. We might as well have a quick view of the whole room here, if we can make it. But yeah, look at, it's it's just a little overwhelming to see these all displayed. And we, we work at a store that's filled with Lego, but this is like really special to see. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a spot that uh, we love hanging out in, and unfortunately we're almost out of space. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Eventually you reach a certain point, but right now it just looks fantastic. Everything's got a place, and it's all arrayed very nicely. Let's start yeah. over here on the left. We've got... The amazing dark blue and yellow loop coaster. Now, it, are you a fan of the roller coaster line of Lego sets? Is that one you had to get? So. Yeah, it was definitely one that uh, we had our eye on that, you know, before it came out, we thought would be really cool for the collection and just unique. Oh, yeah. Know, colors and, and then obviously just the mechanisms and, and how yeah. it works. So. Great functionality. It's yeah. fun to just ha wind it up and see the car go down. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I see a number of, a uh, couple of Batman and Lego movie sets here. Is this kind of where these uh, themes uh, kind of collect here in this side of the room? Yeah, just, uh, you know, we, we fell in love with, uh, you know, with those sets, Apocalypse Berg and Joker Manor, and wanted to add those to, uh, mm -hmm. to the collection as well. And fortunately, was able to get all of those sealed, which is fun. That so, is nice, yes. Yeah. And uh, so when you're, you're looking to collect sets, do you prefer to get them sealed so you have the full building experience, or would you like to get a deal by getting it built, or kind of as is? A little bit of both. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, probably a little extreme on, um, you know, having the set complete with mm -hmm. all the figs and... Understandable, you know, yeah. So um, grabbing those at the store when I can and, uh, you know, other sources, but... Absolutely. Yeah. But, and, and if, I'm, if I may, if you have any sets from those two lines, the Lego Batman movie and the Lego movie, those are the ones to get because Apocalypse Berg is amazing. It's so dynamic. And yeah. The uh, Lady Liberty. And then you got the Joker Manor, which is just really special set it's just so dynamic has a roller coaster feature and all the great figures so yeah they're just fun sets to to admire for sure absolutely and then behind that you have a very carefully displayed bat wing up there i like how you've got it kind of positioned vertically to save on space so yeah yeah we actually snagged that at the store with the the stand and then we got the 89 Batmobile over there, they go with it, so. Nice. How to get both of those. Yeah, those stands can be useful to save a little bit of space on what could otherwise be a pretty difficult to display uh, set. Yep. Speaking of difficult display, how's that AT, AT doing right there? That's awesome. So. Yeah, he does not move much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've heard uh, they can kind of be a little wobbly. Yes, yeah, yeah it's a definitely very fragile. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
We've moved him probably twice since okay. we've had him yep. to, mm -hmm. to make sure he does not fall. That's great. That's and not one I want to re-put together. Absolutely not. Yeah, no, that's great. But uh, I also see we have a Darth Maul polybag there, mm -hmm. and I was talking to Ethan uh, just a minute ago about his polybag display solutions. Mm -hmm. That's a really, I, I have not seen that before, and I think it's amazing. Yeah, so. yeah, it makes it easy to display them. I found them on Instagram, another influence had them, and mm -hmm. uh, he directed me to Amazon to grab them, so... Fantastic, yeah. yes. And then uh, right next to it, there's a set that's really special, the ATOT. And I don't think I've ever even seen this one built. We've got it in the store a couple times in the box, but this is just really special. When did you acquire this one? Uh, I think last fall, or late, late, late summer, maybe early fall. So pretty uh, recently, year, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, we snagged that one at the store again. So a lot of these came from the store. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's Which great. That's awesome. excellent. Yeah, plug to the Atlanta Brick Co. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the awesome Slave One UCS. That is really nice. So, uh, and I'm seeing at least three UCS Star Wars sets here. Is that one of the ones you kind of really like to focus on is the big awesome dynamic sets like that? Yeah, I love those. Um, and it was always something, Ethan was always into Star Wars and uh, you know, seeing his sets for years and something mm -hmm. that we could all do together. And so uh, those were some of my first sets is, you know, is, the Star Wars sets, yeah, that's what they were into. The big uh, so. headliner sets, yeah, yep. that's awesome. But yep. not to avoid the details, you have quite a few of the smaller, more character-based ones below. Which mm -hmm. ones are we looking at on the, like these bottom shelves here? Yeah, I mean, you've got obviously the Jabba's Palace and Sail Barge and, you know, some of the Brickheads, but uh, definitely the two Jabba's Palace on those and mm -hmm. Sandcrawler. And, and that's the oldest version of the Sandcrawler too, the really blocky one, right? Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, I love the colors and the way that that's designed. So mm -hmm. I see a bunch of those classic figures down there too. Are you a fan yeah. of the old school characters as well as the new ones? I am. Ethan got me into that and uh, I just love that classic old old style mm -hmm. so i know that the video games often bring back some of those you know uh, throwback characters yeah and so it, it really helps uh, kind of incorporate the entire star wars line not just the the current ones so yeah that's great yeah seeing him play that and play that with him when he was a kid uh, brings back memories for that so absolutely fantastic and then you got a number of the star wars busts down here too you have a uh, stormtrooper darth vader and you even have that very hard to find tie fighter pilot right yep that is awesome. Yeah, we have a few more sealed, but need more space. Gotcha. <laughs> so yes. we, we want to build some of the other ones. Too. Yep. I'm starting to run into that issue too. I, it's 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 tough, but at least you have a couple ready to go, and then all these built too. So I mean, like you've got you got the collection. It's just a matter of when you get enough shelves up, right? Exactly. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got. I really like the way that this um, UCS Cloud City is displayed. Is that UCS or is it just just Cloud City? Yeah. I. I don't know, it's technically. It's yeah. kind of Cloud on the gray City. area, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 The d display case definitely makes it much easier to have out and, mm -hmm. and displayed because it's quite big. Yes. But, it's, um, it's like the size of a very large pizza, but then it's got some vertical volume too. So it's like, what do you do with it? You, oh, obviously you suspend it like that. So that's yeah. Great. Yeah. And it, you know, definitely holds the smaller Falcon and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The midi scale Falcon so. parked below. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. And then over here on the right, I got to talk about this awesome uh, Lord of the Rings. I want to say Riven Dance, but it's actually <laughs> Rivendell. We'll, Rivendell. We'll give it its real name. Yeah. Yeah. What was the name you were saying earlier, Daniel? That was different. Oh, Rivet Smell. Rivet Smell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we come up with nicknames at Atlanta Brickco, but this is really phenomenal. This is actually the first time I've seen it built. Hmm. And did Ethan actually build this one for you? He did, yeah. That's it was, awesome. It was one that we snagged. Uh, release day and then grabbed one at the store because they limit you know limit you to two online and absolutely uh, it was one that we all got but it's uh it's a spectacular set i mean the colors are unbelievable the figures look awesome so mm -hmm. as soon as we heard that was coming out we knew we had to earmark some cash to exactly <laughs> yep people have been saving up for rivendell to get it that's awesome yeah yeah and, and it's it's just a phenomenal set built and it's also larger than i really you know it has the measurements online yeah. but it's bigger than you imagine like yeah. a lot of these UCS sets can be, so it's really cool. Yeah, you definitely got to have some space. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and on the subject of space, I really like that you've got uh, similar shelving to uh, Ethan and Ty, where you got these awesome metal and wood shelves, and it just has such a classy look to it. So kudos to you guys Thanks. for your display solutions. just looks great. So. Yeah, trying to maximize space as much as possible. Yes, those are fairly deep shelves, too, so you're able to fit things like that, that gunship and that ATTE mm -hmm. in that deep area and still have room for other vehicles next to them, so it's fantastic. Yeah. 
And I see you've got a couple of the classic Star Wars here. You want to describe what we're looking at there? Yeah, Daniel's starting to look at the uh, the original Cloud City, which was uh, a fun set to to add to the collection. And I know Ethan was able to get you know get one as well, which mm -hmm. is fun to have two of those in the house, and um, was able to get that figure and most of those figs at uh, Atlanta Brick Co as well. So fantastic! Yeah. Yes, yeah, we're one of the few places that usually has one. Sometimes, uh, yeah. sometimes we have even more than one. That's fun. So. Yeah. And then you have, I noticed the difference between you and uh, Ethan is that you've got that one fully displayed with the back and the extra vehicle there. So that's really nice that you're able to get all of it in the same picture. So yeah. No, no uh, skin off of Ethan's nose, but <laughs> just, yeah. it's nice to see the entire assembly there. So All about space. Absolutely. <laughs> and I see some a number of cool Star Wars figures down here. Are there any particular favorites you want to point out in that uh, beautiful assembly there. So. Yeah, I mean, I love the uh, smooth hair Leia, which oh, is in yeah. the second row there. Um, the Chrome Vader and Chrome Stormtrooper mm -hmm. were recent additions, probably in the last couple months that we were able to find. So it was That's really awesome. nice to add those. Uh, Ethan and I were actually admiring the Ahsoka yesterday, which is just awesome. I love that. that Such figure. a great print, so, yeah. Yeah, there, there's some great ones in there. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, Star Wars is one of those themes that has hundreds of gorgeous and highly collectible figures and that's really cool to see them all kind of grouped together here so yeah speaking of rare figures i gotta talk about that awesome white boba fett in the poly bag there with the beautiful display case that is <laughs> super special to see yeah we grabbed that probably about a year ago now mm -hmm. so yep and you got the ghosts fun. and the ucs cantina over there i believe that's what is that one yep. right? yeah there you go yeah, I love that set. They did a great job with it. But again, another set you got to have plenty of space to spread out. It's about the same size as Rivendell, I think, from a yeah. space perspective. So, absolutely, and it also almost has, I think, a similar amount of figures too. It's like what is twenty something? It's crazy, yeah, something so. like that. That's awesome. Yeah, I love the the sets where you get a lot of figures. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, so the the characters are very important to your collecting habits here. So that's awesome. Yeah got a few more poly bags and I love this old Indiana Jones set so is that something you got recently in anticipation of the new ones or is that something you've had for a while no we actually just got that a week or two ago um, it was one we definitely wanted to grab especially with the new sets coming out mm -hmm. just being an Indiana Jones fan and uh, would love to do some comparisons of the new sets with the older ones so absolutely I know that uh, there are going to be some things that are Obviously not as good with, uh, I'm guessing, at least a decade of set design, uh, you know, improvements since then. But one thing that I think you will enjoy is that old uh, boulder that rolls down. I don't think they have a uh, single piece plastic boulder in the new set, so that's pretty yeah. fun. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's cool. And you got the awesome X-Wing up there too. Yep. And the Razor Crest next to that. Some very big dynamic ships hanging out just below your TV there. So. Yep. Center stage. <laughs> Absolutely. So that Razor Crest just looks awesome on display. Yeah. So. And you've also got that uh, Chrome N1 Starfighter, the N1 Naboo Starfighter? Yeah. yeah. I don't even remember the official title, but that's awesome. Yeah, that was uh, the second set that I had ever bought. I started with a farm set, mm -hmm. the Lego farm set, several years ago. And then last year when Ethan got a job at Atlanta Brick Co., mm -hmm. uh, I started coming up a little bit more and just got hooked and just could not let that one go so that that kind of started what mm -hmm. you're looking at in exactly room. it snowballed from there right it did so, yeah and uh so that that was definitely a fun one to be able to put to uh put in the collection so that was the second step in the journey of your lego room here that's <laughs> yeah. awesome yeah yep and then uh you got the awesome millennium falcon I, I, yeah. I described it earlier as being subtly uh, kind of tucked away back there. It's very nice that you're able to have such a gigantic set still accessible there, right? Yeah. Right in front of the TV. That's great. It's a so. massive set. So, again, having a spot to display it. I'd love to have it out, but it's so hard to find a spot you wide still want, enough. Yeah, exactly. Still want walking room in the, in the area, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And I see a couple DeLoreans down there. You actually yeah. have both the older one and the newer one, too. So that's really cool. Yeah. I guess Ethan and I kind of joke and tie that I guess I'm a, I'm a completionist in mm -hmm. collecting, so I feel like I have to snag as much as I can uh, when available and when I see it. Yeah, if you have uh, one part of a assembly, you got to have the entire lineup, right? Yeah. So I can understand the, it's so not quite OCD, but it's like just making sure they all look good together, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Yep. And then you got uh, the Ecto-1 and a bunch of the uh, Batmobiles and Tumblers down there, too. Is that kind of where those those movie genres end up right below some of the UCS sets right there? That's kind yeah. of their pocket. So. Yep, yep, exactly. Fantastic. Yeah, all favorite movies. Yeah. 
Uh, but speaking of movies, we've got some things from, I believe this is kind of like the Lego Ninjago movie era-ish, because that's where Ninjago City came from. Yeah. But yeah, those are some really cool sets. And I think this is probably the first time I've ever seen all three lined up like this. So yeah. that is really cool. When did you uh, acquire these? Uh, I think, again, last fall. Uh, and really wasn't into it when we first started collecting, but came across those at the store and mm -hmm. just loved the detail, loved all the colors, because um, they're just spectacular sets. Oh, yeah. They're fantastic. So uh, we definitely wanted to add that to the collection. And just, you know, after a while, there's so much gray with Star Wars, so mm -hmm. we started to add some pops of color. Absolutely. Uh, it's a break from the, uh, the monotony <laughs> of uh, tone, right? So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. And yeah, if you're talking about color and detail and fun uh, techniques, these are, these three sets really are like, what else compares to those in that regard? That's awesome. Yeah. So, and I just love the way that you've got them like all arrayed there because, you know, you look at the sets and you're like, that's an amazing set or that's an iconic set. But then if you see how the water just literally blends them all together into one cityscape, it's just really special. So that's awesome. Yeah. Kudos to the display uh, solution there too. So. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like some of the other uh, rooms we will see, we have the Lord of the Rings and uh, the Orthanc in particular. You guys all seem to really enjoy that set. Is that a particular favorite of you guys? It is. We love those movies. And um, mm -hmm. so, again, the completionist piece of me kicked in and, and wanted to snag all the sets from those movies and, you know, what, what came out then. And then, obviously, having Rivendell added to that. But, yeah, Daily Bugle and Orthanc, they're awesome. We yes. Love those. Fantastic. And then you got some of the Lord of the Rings brickheads. What's your opinion on those? I know some of them were slightly controversial. Yeah, I, um, again, we wanted to make sure we, you know, grab those when they first came out. But I, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of the brickheads. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some tweaks that you could make to. Yep, I've seen a few, a few. of them. Yeah. you mm -hmm. know, but uh, I think overall they're pretty good. I think uh, the the big picture is they're making Lord of the Rings Lego sets again. That's exactly. probably a big thing to celebrate, right? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, great. Exactly. I hope they do a lot more. And I love that uh, built smog down there. He is pretty special. That big dark red dragon. Yeah. Uh, does do you ever run into issues with the reddish brown or dark red pieces in some of these older sets? Do they ever hear a crack in the night and you're like, uh oh, what was that? I, I haven't had a crack. We had a couple when we built them. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Not since they've been displayed that we've noticed. That's but, good. Yeah. I know we have you have it nicely. Uh, room temperature cool in here. You're not exposed to too much light, so yeah. I think you got them in a good spot. Hopefully, you don't run into any yeah. issues there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, moving on to our right, we've got what looks like a, a really cool vertical city here. You got all these modulars, and at the top, you have all the pirate ships on display. So uh, walk us through what we've got here. We, I guess, it was just a choice of space where the pirate ships ended up on top. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we've really gotten into the pirate ships and some of the castles over the last year, but um, we loved the, you know, again, the movie themes. Mm -hmm. you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, Lord yeah. of the Rings, yep. Yeah. That's awesome. And I also see the classic Lego pirate ship making its way, as well as the 90th anniversary castle above some of those modulars. Are you a fan yeah. of the classic Lego themes as well? I love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, these... Uh, I, I, I've seen a, some nice collections of modulars, but they're all usually kind of in a line or in a city where it's not quite all accessible. Here, it's almost mm. like opening a magazine and mm. seeing them all perfectly arranged in front of us. So I really, I like this, um, you know, upright display versus, you know, sometimes they can get kind of buried in a city street. Yeah. It's harder to see. Yeah. Yeah, the shelf definitely worked out nice for all the modulars that we've added. Mm -hmm. and we've got a few more that are still in boxes that we'll get to hopefully soon a little bit of space maybe yeah. move some things around right <laughs> exactly yeah inventory some stuff and mm -hmm. put some new stuff out i do see a particularly interesting set you've got the bricklink lego store i believe it was yep from the afl designer program that's pretty cool do you uh keep an eye on those sets and purchase them when they come out initially or do you kind of catch them on the rebound like uh, some of the other ones here so. so since i just start collecting last kind of february march mm -hmm. um, i missed that wave because i really oh, didn't know about it so yep. i had to snag some of these on the secondary market which was no fun yep <laughs> but i've been watching the uh the new series that they've they've got going on right now i think through the end of this month there's some voting going on and then yep it takes, I guess, about a year to get those sets once they, you know, decide on what's going to get produced. So. Exactly. It's a bit of a waiting game once you're yeah. able to order them, but yeah, yeah. eventually. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to be able to catch some from the next wave. <laughs> Fantastic. Yep. 
And of these modulars, do you have a particular favorite that you would like to point out? Because these are some, I mean, the modulars are all incredible sets, but yeah. there's always something that really catches the eye of the builder that is special. Any there that are standing out to you? Uh, I actually, I really love the new jazz club that just came out. Mm -hmm. um, there are no stickers in that, that set, which ah, was awesome. Yes. And uh, just a bunch of unique techniques and colors and... Uh, you know, like the little garden greenhouse on top, I thought mm -hmm. was a really nice addition, but having all of those printed pieces just made it so much more fun to build. Oh yeah, So it, it speeds up the process. It makes it so, you know, perfect and clean because stickers, you have to actually pay attention to make sure they're correct and yes. not uh, misaligned or anything. Yeah. So, so yeah. much more satisfying for the build process. So. Yeah. That's awesome. And I think we were talking about this earlier. There's, there was a few modulars that are not quite in the collection. Some of the really old, super expensive ones. Mm -hmm. And you're just kind of like waiting for a good opportunity to get them. Is there other Lego sets that are still kind of on your list to collect at some point? And maybe like a white whale that you're looking for? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some pirate ships that I would, you know, love to add. Uh, mm -hmm. And a few of the modulars for sure. Yeah. yeah. There's always something, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The collection's never really complete because it's almost unlimited Lego sets to choose from, right? Yeah, so. and there's always new stuff coming out and mm -hmm. more sets you discover along the way. Oh, yes, absolutely. Like like BrickLink, for example. Yeah. Those ones that kind of, you know, might miss the radar of some people. So. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. So I see a huge variety of sets we have in this area. It looks like, you know, looking back on Star Wars, you see a lot of white and gray, but mm -hmm. here you see a ton of color. Is that one of the things that motivated you with these cool Pandora sets, some of the pieces and colors? Yeah, absolutely. We loved, we loved the movies when they came out and, and then, you know, seeing the different colors and building techniques that mm -hmm. they released, you know, with all the Avatar sets were one that, again, I had to grab all of them. And, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, so that was, that was fun. The uh, VIP points made that possible. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Yep. That's, you gotta <laughs> watch out for those little benefits and sales you're able to take advantage of, right? So yeah. that's awesome. And I know that I even was purchasing some of the after sets just brand new from lego.com because I'm like, I want that tree of souls. It looks super cool. The pieces are amazing. So Yeah, for yeah. sure. But then behind Daniel, we actually have a number of sets that have yet to make their way onto the shelves because you just haven't got quite got the space, right? This is the yep. to build pile eventually. It is, so. yeah, one of the to build piles. So. Mm -hmm. so I see a number of busts and you have some, I think there's, there's at least a modular and then some like Hobbit and yeah. one that's really standing out to me as a special set is that uh, employee gift up there got to look yeah. at that right up there there you go Daniel that yeah. is really special how did you find that because you I don't think you guys have worked at the Lego stores anytime soon right <laughs> no no I went on a hunt to try to find that and found a guy in Denmark that owned it mm -hmm. uh, it was a, an employee that got it so all the letters and all the details are inside the box and the original bags and and everything are in there so it was used, but displayed on his shelf, and he finally wanted to pass it along and let somebody else enjoy it, so um, was able to pick that up. Fantastic. Yeah, that is such a special set. I remember seeing it a couple of years ago when it first came out. I was We, we were walking into the store, and one of the employees was leaving with it. I'm like, oh. is that the set? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you want to look at it? I'm like, yeah. So yeah. that is super cool to see in person again. That's yeah. so special. Yeah, so. we can't wait to build that and display that soon. Yeah. And speaking of special, we also have that castle in the forest down there, too. That's yeah. one that I have a storied history with I won't go into here, but really cool to see that one, as well as the Lego House uh, Pirate Minifigure Tribute. That's a really cool set. Yeah, so I had to snag that to go with the pirate ship. You know? Absolutely. So. Since you guys are uh, since you're leaning more into those classic themes, those really make sense, right? The castle, the pirates, some of those yeah. original Lego IPs. So that's awesome. Yep. I also see a bonsai tree back there, too. I don't see a lot of the botanical collection here yet, but is that yeah. something you're kind of looking into getting into, maybe? Yeah, I love the colors, again, and uh, the parts are awesome. Mm -hmm. so, yep. You know, I think we've got the succulents down there, maybe, or over here in the orchid. And so, yep. Um, we recently picked up some of those that we'll probably add and mm -hmm. maybe make their way outside of the Lego room. Yeah, exactly. To, to actual, actual house, house decorations, yep. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing yeah. you can actually get away with most of the time is the, the bouquet, the flower bouquet. The, you know, you could put those in the living room and they look sort of normal. So you yeah. can have an excuse to bring Lego into the rest of the house. <laughs> That's great. In the middle of the room, we have this awesome like, carved stump coffee table. And we have these really cool sets on top of them, too. 
Uh, what do we have here on the front here? Yeah, the Temple of Doom that we actually just built. Uh, it was a sealed sealed set that we opened. Uh, Fantastic. In, in hopes of the new stuff being released. Unfortunately, that one was canceled with the updated uh, new yes. release. As far but, as we know right now, it doesn't yeah, seem like it's happening, Or at least right? on hold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a fun set to add, for sure. I actually think it, the, the, its presentation is enhanced by the, the sort of gnarly <laughs> looking wood beneath it. It looks like those... Uh, hidden caves with lava where the, yeah. the setting would have taken place. That's really fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it looks like the Titanic has somehow found its way down to the Temple of Doom <laughs> as well, but I think if I'm reasoning this correctly, this is here because it's just an amazingly huge and dynamic set, and this is a good spot for it, right? So. Yeah, it's probably the only spot we have left to put it, <laughs> yeah. unless I go put it on the living room coffee table. Yeah, and it, yeah, you want to make sure that the Lego has a place, maybe not the entire house, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, gotcha. My wife would prefer that. Yeah, I know that Daniel was one of the uh, purchasers of this set early on, and he found out quickly how big it was, and it wasn't going to quite fit where he expected. Yeah. So it's 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 good that you have a space here for it too. Yeah. So. And it comes apart pretty easy, which is nice in three different sections. Yeah, pretty modular to transform. Yeah, so that's great. So we also have this very cool. Is this a lamp with it shelves? Is. Yeah. That Again, a, maximizing space. Yes. <laughs> and it's a, a fun display solution, too, because you have that very brightly illuminated yellow castle with some of the darker forests below. I think it's yeah. really a cool look. So. Yeah, I love the way the light makes that yellow just pop. Mm -hmm. so. and it reminds me of how I have mine displayed it right at that height with a light above it, too. So it's just mm -hmm. like perfect way for a yellow castle. It's got to glow like gold, right? So. Yeah. And when the 90th anniversary castle came out, that was one I knew we wanted to, to add to the collection. Absolutely. Yes. And then uh, you got the... It's so the classic castle, classic foresters. Then you have a slightly newer castle down there. You want to tell me about that one down there? Yeah, again, one we found at the store and uh, just loved the design and um, thought it'd be a great addition to add some of the, you know, another castle to Absolutely. You can never have enough castles, right? So no. that's great. Yeah. That's actually one of my favorite uh, castle factions is that, uh, you know, uh, red and white and gold lion knight faction. is really, okay. really great sets. So that's cool great. to see that one. So. Yeah. And then... Speaking of sets, you have a bunch here, but I wanted to point out a couple ones that really stood out to me. First, you have that classic Batcave tucked mm -hmm. away back there. That is a fun set. It has some great figures. So. Yeah. Ty had had that one uh, years ago, and when we found that sealed at the store, we wanted to add that to the collection because mm -hmm. his is still missing a few pieces. So there you go. Make sure we had one that was complete to add. Yep. And there's those succulents and mm -hmm. uh, other botanicals we had talked about. That newest flower bouquet is just amazing i think you it could is. easily get away with that um you know living room display for that one <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> save some space yeah, yeah. and then uh, i do see a big hulk buster back there so when was that acquired and you want to tell me about uh, the decision there <laughs> yeah we we were actually at a lego store <clears throat> up in sugarloaf and mm -hmm. saw it on display and that was the first time we saw it on display yeah. and uh, wanted to make sure that we grabbed that just because it looks so much better in person. That's what I've, I was wondering, yeah. The, the box and the, the reviews. So. Initially, it looks a little bit, you know, sketchy maybe. It's yeah. like, it, maybe janky is the word. Yeah. I don't know. It's like it, it wasn't quite landing with me. But if, if you guys enjoy the in-person experience, I mean, you guys are all about this built display. So yeah. that's more important than necessarily the picture in the magazine, right? Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, you also have a little bit of a desk here too. And I see... One really iconic set that's catching my eye on this corner is this Ghostbusters Firehouse. Yeah. That is a pretty special set. I see the Stay Puffed guy making an appearance in <laughs> minifigure form too. So. Yeah, yeah, that's one of our favorite sets as well. Mm -hmm. Again, going go with just the classic movies and absolutely wanted to make sure we had that one. Fantastic. And I also see that very cool um, uh, mouse pad beneath the laptop there. You got the Star Wars character screen. I love that. It's great. So. Yeah, yeah, that's my workspace every day. So. <laughs> That's awesome. It makes it fun. Yep, get to work surrounded by a Lego, too, with a bunch of great sets right at your fingertips if you get a little bit bored during yeah. a Zoom call, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then trade them out, right? You yeah. Know, and put, put that one on the shelf and go get another one. So That's awesome. And that about finishes up this room, but thank you, Bronson, for the tour and looking at all these awesome sets. All right, we got to see all three of the different rooms filled with awesome sets. Thank you guys so much for your time. And I know that you actually put some work into this because you pared down a few sets and traded them into the store. We sure appreciate all the hard work, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming by. Absolutely. It's been fun. All right, back to the studio.